नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम last few lectures we have been discussing the cyclotomic field extensions of q and cyclotomic field extensions of finite fields and we have we now know what exactly their galva groups are and what their what are their orders etc etc i still want to further apply these results to particular field extensions of characteristic p to gather some more information about general problems but before that as we saw in the last uh, lecture at the end we need to decide when the fixed field of a subgroup of a galva extension again be galva over the ground field and for this i want to now prove a, a general result which will also give us many examples of galva extensions so for example i want to prove the following theorem now we are we are in a general case we are not in characteristic zero or characteristic positive or any uh, such case but i will now state this theorem in a most generality so the theorem one wants to prove is let l be any field and g and h h be a finite subgroup of the automorphism group group of l so that means what that means h is a subgroup of odd l and i don't write fields so when i say odd l of a field that means automorphisms as a field so this is a group composition of two automorphisms of a field is again automorphism of field inverse etc they are all automorphisms and h is a finite subgroup of that let me remind you this automorphism group of a field need not be finite in fact it can be very large group even for a field like l equal to c we only know automorphism group of q is trivial automorphism group of r is trivial also automorphism group of a z mod p is trivial automorphism group of a finite uh, prime fields are always trivial because um, the identity the only automorphism of the prime field and in general automorphism of a automorphism group of a field l is always be over its prime field so this one is also i is same as odd l and k here where k is a prime field of prime field of l and the prime fields are either q or z mod p so k is either q or z mod p so this is the side so we have taken any finite subgroup of the automorphism group of a field l and therefore this odd l operates naturally on l once again i will write the operation that is sigma comma x this goes to sigma of x so its evaluation at this x and this is clearly an operation map that we are one is very obvious so therefore fixed field of h makes sense so fix h l this is this will contain a prime field and this is a sub field of l this is a sub field of l because if x is fixed x inverse is also fixed x plus y is also fixed 
x minus y is also fixed and x times y is also fixed and one is fixed obviously because one is an element in the prime field. So, therefore, we get a subfield. Now, the question is the question I want to answer is whether this extension L over fixed field of H whether is this extension Galois or not and the answer is yes this is a Galois extension. then this is a Galois extension. All right, and how am I going to prove this? So, proof. Remember, uh, first of all, how does one check the field extension is a Galois field extension? The one checks that um, the order of the Galois group equal to the degree of the field extension. So, we have to see what is the order and what is the degree of the field extension. In any case, we know that the, the Galois group of this, so we know by Didik and Artin that the Galois group of this Gal L over, let me call this field as K. L over K, this order is bounded by the degree of L over K. This we know. And we are interested in proving the equality. So, we want to prove equality here. This is what we want to prove. So, we will prove first that the degree of L over K is bounded by the order of H. This is one and this is what we will prove and what is obvious is the following. The, Galois group of L over K. See what are the elements? They are all automorphisms of L which fixes elements of K. But elements of, so already elements of H, they have this property. Elements of H are automorphisms of L and they fix K because K is by definition fixed field of H. So, all elements of K are fixed by H. So, this inclusion is obvious, clearly this. Once I have this and this, then what will I get? I will get order of H is smaller equal to the cardinality of L over K, which is smaller equal to the degree of L over K and by what we would prove that will be L over K is smaller equal to H and therefore the equality is everywhere and that will finish our proof. So, we only have to prove this double question mark this. The order of the dimension of L over K is bounded by cardinality of H. Okay, so, this is what we will prove. Alright, so, proof of L over K smaller equal to cardinality H. This is what we need to prove. That means, and let us call this cardinality of uh, H to be N. That means what? That means H is H is a subgroup and it has exactly N elements and one of them is identity IDL and then sigma this is sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma N. These are all elements of H and we want to prove that to prove that dimension of L over K is less equal to N. And how does one prove that uh, dimension of uh, L over K is less equal to N? That means I will prove that 
every n plus 1 elements of L are linearly dependent over a k. So, we will prove, prove that if I have n plus 1 element x 1 to x n plus 1 are elements in L, then x 1 to x n plus 1 are linearly dependent over k. Therefore, then the dimension of L over k will not be more than n that is what we wanted to prove. So, take any n plus 1 element. So, let x 1 to x n plus 1 be elements of L and I want to prove that they are linearly dependent. That means, I want to produce a linear dependence relation. All right. So, I, I form a matrix, matrix A. This is the first row I apply sigma 1 to this. So, sigma 1 x 1, I want to drop that bracket here. It is understood that this is sigma 1 of x, sigma 1 of x n plus 1. No. Okay, let me write it. This is the first row. Second row is sigma 2 x 1, etc., etc., sigma 2 x n plus 1 and so on. And there are n elements in H. So, last row is sigma n x 1, sigma n x n plus 1. So, this is a matrix. The rows are numbered by the elements of H and the columns are numbered by the elements, the element we started with. So, this is a matrix M n rows, n plus 1 columns and the entries are in the field L. Everything is happening in the field L. So, this is a matrix n rows, n plus 1 columns. So, therefore, and let us call these columns, the first column is C 1, this column is C n plus 1. There are elements where? There are elements in, think of column. So, there are elements in L power n. So, this, this is the columns, columns of A are denoted by this. So, C 1 is this column and so on. There are n plus 1 elements and this is a vector space of dimension n. Therefore, they are linearly dependent over L. I am thinking L power n as a L vector space and there are n plus 1 elements there, uh, n plus 1 elements in the vector space of dimension L. Therefore, they are linearly dependent. So, I will use this. So, dimension of L n over L, this we know it is n and therefore, C 1 to C n plus 1 are linearly dependent. So, C 1 to C n plus 1 are linearly dependent over L. So, therefore, there is a linear dependence relation and I am going to choose a minimal linear dependence relation. That means, I am going to choose R. So, choose R uh, bigger equal to 0 such that And R of course is smaller equal to n such that uh, I have a relation like this uh, such that C 1 to C R plus 1 are linearly dependent over L. I have taken R plus 1 right. So, choose minimal. that this. So, this means, 
this means what this means one of the column is combination of the other columns so cr plus 1 equal to y1 c1 y r c r where y1 to y r are elements in l and because i have chosen r minimal these y1 to y r are uniquely determined actually actually i should say that then y1 to y r r uniquely determined because otherwise i will subtract and then i'll get a smaller relation so y1 to y n y r are uniquely determined fine now to this equation i am going to apply take any let sigma be any element in h and i am going to apply y in h uh, sigma be in any element in g uh, or l no uh, of h and apply apply sigma to the this equation this is what i am going to apply so what will i get sigma of this so i will get sigma of the column cr plus 1 equal to and sigma is sigma respects multiplication so that means i can take it out individually so this is sigma of y1 sigma of c1 etc plus plus sigma respect plus and multiplication therefore i can individually uh, take like this sigma of yr times sigma of cr and so now what happened the matrix now i had originally the matrix a and the columns were c1 to cn plus 1 this was the matrix all right now um, if i apply sigma to the matrix i will get so sigma of c1 etc sigma of cn plus 1 are the columns are columns of a matrix of the matrix obtain from a the matrix a by applying the permutation sigma so i have sigma i have the matrix and i have the automorphism sigma so i apply it to the columns and then the new columns will be sigma c1 sigma n plus 1 that will be the new column and the above equation show that the r plus 1th column is this one so the r so the columns are not changing the columns are only getting shuffled so in particular the sigma r plus 1 is a column somewhere right but then i want to rewrite this column so that so from here i want to conclude now uh, uh, to demonstrate what will be the sigma cr plus 1 this is typically we look like this this is the originally it was r plus 1th column so the entries are um, a 1 r plus 1 is fixed so that the next entry is fixed a n r plus 1 this is the column r plus 1 and these i this this column and i have played sigma to this sigma to this 
but this column is again a column somewhere again the same column so when i rearrange when i rearrange the rows now so the equations are same only they are number different so if i use that that means sigma if i original column sigma cr plus 1 this column is also same as sigma y1 uh, c1 plus 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 sigma y r cr you see what i am saying i am saying the following we had this equation and in this i want to rewrite the rows when i rewrite the rows i will get this column cr plus the the rows rows maybe i said one wrong word that this this are this matrix is obtained from a by applying a permutation sigma to the rows rows of a so therefore when i rewrite this equation so if the if the first row has gone to r uh, some s th row then i will write that write down that equation first and then this coefficients are not changing they are fixed the coefficients are same this is the con uh, this is an element in l so therefore by rewriting the rows i get this equation but this equation so original equation we had was this this and therefore this y i are uniquely determined therefore we have no choice but sigma of y i equal to y i for all i 1 to r and this is true for every sigma in h that simply means so this means y i is y 1 to y r all are elements of the fixed field which is k which is we are denoting k so therefore we have proved that what did we prove now uh, this cr plus 1th column is y1 to yr uh, linear combination of this c1 to cr therefore xr plus 1th element here r plus 1th row that will be xr so that will check that so so but you look at xr plus 1 which is equal to y1 x1 plus 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 y r x r this is but this means x1 to x n plus 1 r linearly dependent over k because the coefficients are in k now y1 to y r in k that's what we have proved it so we proved that they are linearly dependent that is what we wanted to prove and therefore the dimension of l over k will not be more than the cardinality of h and once we have this therefore the and h is a subgroup of the galois group so this cardinality will be smaller than cardinality of l over k which is smaller equal to l over k by dedekind artin and this is smaller equal to h we have just now proved therefore all are equalities therefore gal l over k oh therefore l over k is a galois extension so this is what we have proved it so it's very simple you just have to note the following you have you form a matrix and apply sigma to the matrix so that means your rows are permuted according to the permutation so the first row might go to other row and so on and then you compare the new columns of this matrix and from there you conclude that they are the coefficients are fixed and therefore they are in the base field k and uh, the fixed field k and therefore 
they are linearly dependent and therefore dimension is less equal to n and so on. So, I want to remind you why did I prove this. So, first of all we have many extension, many examples of Galois extensions now. Namely, what you do is take a field, take a finite subgroup of automorphisms of the field and take the fixed field and this the original field will be Galois over the fixed field. So, for example, I could simply do the following. So, I could take take the, the group S n, let us take the group S n, this is my group, this is the permutation group. So, these are the bijective maps from 1 to n to 1 to n. This is permutation group, group on n letters, on n letters. And everybody know this was the first group that ever came to study and the study was mostly initiated by Lagrange. This group has order n factorial, order of S n is n factorial. This is a big group uh, and now I take a very simple elements here 1, 2 this is a transposition. So, this is a map you should think this is. So, the notation is it is written like this that means 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 and the remaining elements are fixed. So, the notation you there are various people use various notation when there is a uh, more room for confusion actually we should write it more explicitly and this is usually written as see 1 goes to 2. So, upper row is the symbols 1 to n and the down one is the images 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 and all other elements are fixed. So, 3 goes to 3 and n goes to n when there is a confusion with the how many letters etcetera like that. These are called transpositions more generally i comma j, i j is the inter interchange and these are elements of order, these are elements of order 2 because when I compose 1 2 with 1 2, this is 1 2 square and what is the composition? Composition is usually read from this side from right to left not left to right. So, one, 2 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. So, 1 goes to 1, where do 2 go? 2 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2. So, 2 goes to 2 and everybody else has fixed anyway. So, this is identity. So, this is an element of order 2. Transpositions are of elements of order 2 in the permutation group. Not all elements of order 2 are transpositions. So, what do I do? Now, I take, take the big field, take any field k and take polynomials in many variables x1 to xn and this is the quotient field of the polynomial ring because we want a field. So, this is the quotient field of the polynomial ring and now uh, the permutations every sigma in Sn that gives you an automorphism of this field x1 to xn. To give the automorphism of the field, I only have to give where the variables go because once I know where variables go and if I want an automorphism of the field which respects addition, multiplication, etcetera. So, I only have to give where variables go, then I know where polynomials will go and then I will know where rational functions go. Therefore, this, this automorphism will be uniquely determined where I will send the x i's but I send x is to some x of sigma i. Sigma is some other number. So, this, this gives an automorphism. So, therefore, S n there is a natural map from S n to the automorphism group of automorphism group of the rational function field in n variables over k because k linear because k is fixed and x i's are going to x sigma i's and what is this map? This sigma going to this 
sigma. It's the same same letter. So sigma defines an automorphism, and it's clear that this sigma is uniquely determined by the permutations where it goes. So therefore, this is actually an injective group homomorphism. Injective group homomorphism. There are many more automorphisms of the rational function field than this one. For example, so I only say this is injective. This will not be surjective in general. In fact, it will almost never be surjective. For example, just to tell you, take n equal to 2. And then we have automorphisms of k rational function field in two variables, x1, x2. And then this was s2. s2 has cardinality 2. And this one I show you, there are many more automorphisms. First of all, one automorphism is x1 goes to x2. This is sigma 1, let us say. And other one, and x2 is fixed. No, x2 cannot be fixed, x2 goes to x1. This is, uh, this is, this together is a transposition 1, 2. This sigma is in 1, 2. And of course, identity. And I want to produce one more automorphism of the, this field over k. So, look at that. x1, I want to map it not to x2 or not to variable, but I will map it to x2 plus or minus x1 square. And x2 is fixed. I claim this is an automorphism. No, I should say uh, x1. So, x1, x2 are in the images, but this is not of the form this, because the degree I want to, I am bringing the degree. So, there are many more automorphisms of the rational function field in n variable over k. They are not only the automorphism, but automorphism group is definitely a subgroup there. And I can always take a subgroup of Sn and take a fixed field of that. So, fix field of any subgroup H of this. This is a subfield of k x1 to xn. And what we check that this is a Galois group and the Galois group of this is nothing but the given H. This is what we have checked in the above theorem. And uh, this I will come back to this more precisely uh, about the automorphism groups of the rational function field and use it also more precisely to prove produce more more examples and and so on and uh, then apply it to the the finite field extensions of Q to decide some more facts about the Galois group and so on. Uh, thank you very much. We will continue uh, next time.